First off, what is aquaponics? Well, about a decade ago, oh my gosh, I'm getting old. When I started my journey into hydroponics, my very first garden was aquaponic. I used to be really into building freshwater aquariums. I would love to have living plants and kind of try to build a whole realistic habitat for these fish. And as it turns out, freshwater aquarium building was a great stepping stone into aquaponics. So if you are a freshwater aquarium hobbyist, then you already have your foot in the door. My setup was pretty simple. I had a 10 gallon fish tank filled with about 20 fish. Then I had a pump lifting the water up to my reservoir. And then I utilized an ebb and flow system to deliver the water to my plants, circulating it back down into the tank. So first I'd like to admit something. My life back then, circa 2014, um, I was desperate to have a garden in my apartment in Boulder, Colorado, but I was tired of killing plants. I didn't know what I was doing wrong and I needed to find another way to grow things. And I was really interested in hydroponics and thus began my love affair. The other thing about aquaponics is I was working full-time at a brewery at that time. I was managing waiting tables and bartending. So I really didn't have time to have a garden. I didn't have time to do anything maintenance related. And that's the beautiful thing about aquaponics. The fish actually take care of the nutrients and the plants take care of feeding the fish. So how that works is the plants, when I run the water through the ebb and flow, when it comes back into the tank, it's carrying some plant debris matter with it. The fish actually eat that debris and then they do what all of us do and poop. And that poop becomes the nutrients for the plants. I will say one thing here and be very careful to make sure that the size of your tank is appropriate to the amount of fish in there. If your tank is too small and you have too many fish, then you'll start to see problems with ammonia and uh, nitrogen overloads. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, if your tank is too big and you don't have enough fish, then you're gonna see deficiencies, mostly in nitrogen. It also doesn't hurt to add a little cow mag well, calcium and magnesium, uh, just to make sure that the plants are getting everything they need because fish poop does not have everything. So as far as I know, there are only two types of passive gardening. And that's gonna be the cracky method, which is hydroponics, and aquaponics, which is a leg of hydroponics. These are gardens that you set them up and then you can walk away and you don't have to do anything to them. You just come back and you pick your produce. It's a pretty sweet deal and very appealing to a overworked bartender in Boulder, Colorado, where I couldn't grow a garden. All you really have to do is check your pH and make sure that that's balanced, which is something you have to do in every hydroponic garden. So with this setup, I actually thought I was being really clever by doing it all in front of the window. Um, what I didn't account for is when spring and summer rolled around, the Colorado sun is intense and it nuked my plants. It didn't actually kill them, but it got the water up to about 95 degrees. Um, it killed a couple of my fish and it also, was my first introduction into root rot. I didn't know that the water should never be above 85 degrees, um, but I do now from that experience. So if you're wondering, freshwater tanks are supposed to be between 75 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit, not 95 degrees. If you get that high, then you will likely have root rot. The water delivery method can vary. Ebb and flow is not what's required to do aquaponics. You can be as creative as you want. You can have an aquaponic aeroponic garden, a hydroponic garden within a hydroponic garden. It's so meta. But if you look into large scale aquaponics, all you're gonna see is beds of greens growing on top of large tanks of water with fish in them. I'm not really sure why large scale aquaponics or vertical farming tower gardens don't implement aquaponics. Maybe they know something I don't, which is very possible. And I would love to do an aquaponic tower garden. However, I'm currently traveling in my RV and I don't really wanna bring fish on board. But as soon as I get back, I'm gonna start an aquaponic tower garden and report back for you guys. If you do plan on doing your own aquaponic setup, here's what you're gonna need. A fish tank, a safe place for the fish to live and thrive. I personally don't believe that a fish can be really happy without sunlight, so I would advise against using an opaque container. Um, but then again, I'm a vegan hippie, and if you don't care about how your fish feel, then do whatever you wanna do. Next, you're gonna need a pump to lift the water from the tank to your garden. When you're buying the pump, the thing to really look for and to make sure you know is how far it's gonna be traveling from the fish tank to wherever it's gonna be delivered. And most importantly, how high it's gonna be lifted. There's nothing worse than getting an underpowered cheap pump that can't lift your water all the way and distribute it to your garden properly. And on the other hand, if you have something too powerful, it's actually gonna build up pressure within your system. And that is really not what you want for long-term sustainability. Make sure you pick the right pump for the right distance for your water to travel. 
And on the other side, you're gonna need your garden. Like I said, I did an ebb and flow garden, which is just where I have a, a box filled with substrate. Um, the plants were in that substrate. The water got lifted from the aquarium and dumped into one side of it where it flooded and filled up all the way to the other side where it went back down into the fish tank. Very, very simple design, very effective but you can do whatever you want. The real principles behind aquaponics are just to use the nutrient water that the fish are living in to feed your hydroponic garden and then cycle it. They're not fixed on any type of hydroponic garden. I don't know if people have really gotten this through their heads, but you can really do any kind of hydroponic garden with an aquaponics setup. I think aquaponics is just the way that the nutrients are delivered. The hydroponic garden is the way that the water is delivered. So get creative with it. Try a drip setup, try ebb and flow, try low pressure aeroponics. Or if you're lazy like me, just to spin the roots right in the top of the water and do an aquaponic deep water culture setup. This channel is filled with and continuing to fill with ideas for a hydroponic garden. So cut loose, go crazy, have fun with it. Just grow some shit and let's grow together. Thank you.